Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Unboxing and Stuff. Today we're going to be looking at the iGen 160S portable power station made by Westinghouse. And I'd like to give a quick thanks to them for sending this out for the channel to review. So let's go ahead and get this thing out of the box and then we'll start talking about some features and what it can do. Some protective foam. Here we have the actual unit itself. We'll take a closer look at this here once we get all the accessories out. All right, and then that's it for the main box. We just have a small black box here. So first, looks like we have a 12 volt car charger. Here it looks like we have an adapter that would allow you to plug something in that's 12 volt and a car charger style plug. Looks like we have our 120 volt power supply. And a user guide that's kind of a map style, larger. All right, so those are the three pieces. Uh, let's get in here for a closer look and then we'll talk a little bit about the features and what this thing can actually do. Okay, so on this side we have our main display screen, which right now we have it plugged in and charging. So it's just basically the same exact screen that you're gonna see when the unit is on with the exception of the charging symbol here. So then over here we have our power button, which actually will physically turn on and off the display in the unit. Here we have a flashlight button, which illuminates the flashlight on the left side of the unit. We then have a bulb here, which actually illuminates a light on the back of the unit. And that has two brightness settings, and that's more of a uh, area light. And then we have this plug here, which when you press that, changes from DC to AC, which would liven up the AC plugs on the right side of the unit. Okay, and over here on the right side of the unit, we have two AC plugs, one that is three prong, one that is two prong. We have two USB 2.1 amp charging ports with three and a half amps maximum. We have one USB-C five volt, two amp, it's a Qualcomm Quick Charge 3.0 port. And we also have a USB, uh, same thing, five to nine volt, two amp, Qualcomm Quick Charge 3.0 uh, standard USB port. And then at the bottom here, we have three 5.5 millimeter DC output ports that will do nine to 12 and a half volts, and they'll do 10 amps continuous with 15 amps max. So on the back side of this unit, we have the LED light panel, which has two different settings, a low and a high. Okay, and over on this left side of the unit, we have our flashlight, our DC input for our charging of the unit, and then we also have a small vent to keep the unit cool. And over here, we'll hit the flashlight button. So on the bottom of this, you'll find a sticker showing some information about it. The battery is lithium ion. It has a capacity of 155 watt hours or 42,000 milliamp hours. DC input is 15 volts at two amps. AC output is 120 volts. DC output is nine to 16. 12.6 volts at 10 amps, and then it has the USB outputs, which we did already go over. It also has solar panel input for 13 volts to 25 volts with a maximum of two amps. So this unit is capable of charging uh, on three different ways, like we talked about before, with the car charger, the wall outlet, and the solar. With a solar panel, it'll take approximately seven to nine hours to charge. It'll take approximately seven to eight hours to charge it in a car and seven to eight hours to completely charge it on an AC outlet. This unit is designed to power smartphones, laptops. It can run a TV and it can even charge drones, speakers, and other small accessories. 
and it also can provide power to uh, power lamps or lights. Basically anything that's 100, 100 watts of standard run with up to 150 watts of a peak pull, this thing can handle it. There are some things that they say right off the bat that it cannot handle, which under the right circumstances, potentially some of these things could be used, but as far as the actual AC side of the house, they'll most likely not be able to be used. You have a uh, CPAP machine for the sleep apnea, toasters, heaters, electric kettles, corded drills, hair dryers, microwaves, coffee makers, and blenders are just a few of the things that pull more than 100 continuous watts and that will actually make this unit not be able to run. And so what happens when this unit overloads? The unit will just shut down if it pulls too much and then you can restart it and it'll do that to protect itself that way it doesn't end up getting damaged. Okay, so for our first test, what we're gonna do is we've actually plugged in three different pieces of equipment. We got two speakers and a uh, action cam and we're gonna turn this unit on. So we have all three plugged in right now and as you can see there's no lights illuminated displaying anything uh, showing that there's charging. So with this unit off it actually does not put out power to these ports. So that's something that's good to know and just something to keep in mind. Now as soon as I turn this on you'll see the DC displays up it's showing the USB symbol saying that it's actually applying power to those ports right now. And you can see here that I have a full four bars of charge. I have my red light illuminated over on the action camera and my large speaker you can see is blinking as it is charging. And the small speaker you can see the red illuminated at the top. So that's Pretty much it, as simple as it gets for the USB charging, you just can plug in anything and it's gonna work. It's gonna charge it. Now, here's a cool thing is, so I had one of my camera batteries die, so I threw it here in my wall charger, and now I can plug it in here into the AC port. And right now, it's not charging and everything else is. Now, if I press this plug button here, you'll see that switch over to AC. And then you will notice that the lights are all still on on all my DC charging off of the ports. But you'll also notice that the charging light has come on on the AC. So it can actually run both AC and DC at the same time. So this is some lighter stuff to draw from for now. Um, the next thing we're going to show you is we're going to test this unit on a light. We're going to test this unit on a laptop. And then if we have enough time, we'll maybe go try and find a TV that we can plug into it and just see if it'll power up uh, with this plugged in. Okay, so here for our next set, I actually took both of my newer LED uh, set lights that I actually use for my videos. And I'm going to try and plug one in. And then if that works, then I'm going to try and plug in a second one and see how that does. So we'll go ahead and plug in our first one. And as you can see, based on the light, it came on. And then we'll go ahead and try for our second one. And there you go. So as you can see, this unit has enough power to supply power to both of these. And I'll turn that one up full speed or full power. And there you go. There's that light as well as also full power. So this unit has enough power to run two 45 watt LED set lights. Okay, our next simple test here is going to be to use the unit to see if it'll apply enough power for the laptop. We're gonna go ahead and turn it on. Put it in AC mode. We're gonna take our laptop plug Plug it in, and you can see we're now showing a plug here. Zoom in a little bit so it's a little easier to see. You can see we get our plug here, and you can hear just a little bit of noise as the inverter is supplying some power. 
but it's a pretty quiet noise and it's not consistent probably because this battery was already charged when we plugged it in all right then we'll go ahead and turn it off and as you can see there the charging symbol went away so it will in fact power a laptop okay so my bonus item for the this little unit to run that they didn't have on their list that I thought would be kind of fun uh, to try out would be just a small fan, um, something that you could actually travel with or take with you somewhere uh, and that could come in handy. So we'll go ahead and get this thing set up, turn it on, press the plug to go into AC mode. Then we'll plug our fan in. Then we'll go ahead and turn it on. So there's low speed. Let's go ahead and turn on oscillate. And then we'll race through the speeds to see how it does uh, as we go here. See if you can handle more and more. So we'll go up there one more. We're at our middle speed. Get a nice little breeze coming out of there. And then we'll go up to our max speed here. And it's just a nice little breeze coming out there. Now, some of you guys might think this is goofy, you know, why the heck do you need to take a fan? You know, you're going out to the beach or somewhere outdoors. But I've been some places camping from time to time that are so hot that I can barely sleep. And so having a nice little fan to keep a cool breeze going on you all night long without having to be running a generator or anything like that could come in handy. So one other thing I wanted to show you guys is actually using the 12 volt DC plug here that it came with. And you can just plug it into any one of the three outputs on the front. Then you can take any sort of a car charger device, plug it in there. And then just like with all our other stuff, you have to just turn it on. And as you can see there, we have our little red light comes on and it'll charge this. So in case you forget your power cord, your AC outlet, or something like that, or you only have a car plug because everything else broke, you're still good to go. Okay, for our big test here, what we're gonna do is we are going to play a bunch of my YouTube videos and power the laptop with the portable power pack here. And we're gonna see how long it's gonna last. Over to the right side here by my hand, I have my Osmo Action Camera set up and we're gonna actually use this thing in a time-lapse mode. And we're going to plug it in, get it powered up, and then do a play all on my YouTube channel. And uh, we'll just pop up the timer over here so that we can actually see the date and time. And then we'll record that and just see how long it goes. Okay, so let's go ahead and Get the laptop plugged in, power it on. There it goes, it's pulling. And then make sure we've got our screen brightness all the way up. And then got our time lapse started. And we'll see how long this thing can go. Play all. I'm not gonna have it too loud because I still live here. I'm gonna have to endure this whole thing. We'll do theater mode. All right, and then we got our time stamp big so we can actually see it as we go. All right, we'll see you guys when this thing dies. So here we are, it's the next day, and the power pack was able to run 
the laptop on AC for five hours and 26 minutes before dying. And then the laptop actually ran for an additional one hour and 48 minutes on its internal battery. So we had a total runtime of seven hours and 14 minutes. But one thing I'd like to point out is that that laptop is actually a low-end gaming laptop. It has an actual video card inside of it. So that laptop's power brick, which is slightly larger than a lot of laptops that you'll see these days, it actually can pull up to 250 watts of power. So if I would have put on a video game or something like that, I think it would have probably overloaded the power pack. However, playing videos and streaming off the internet, it actually did relatively well. I was pretty happy with it. One thing to note is that there was a little buzzing. Uh, and I think that's because with that laptop, even though it wasn't using the graphics card, it was probably pulling on the upper limits of this thing, uh, maybe even teetering up above 100 watts uh, and then down below, which kept it running, but may have uh, been pushing it to the limit, essentially. So it's not a loud, huge, annoying buzz, but it's just a subtle buzz that's at least worth noting. And that's, at this point, probably really the only negative is that there's a little buzz when you put a very high load on it. And another thing I wanted to mention is that I didn't actually specify what the dimensions are. And it is 8.14 inches long, 3.77 inches wide, and then seven inches tall. And this thing weighs 3.75 pounds, so it's pretty light and it's pretty small. In case you were wondering, those are those specs. Uh, another thing I wanted to show that was not in the uh, initial portion where I showed the flashlight is that you can actually turn the flashlight on with a single click. And then if you actually press and hold the flashlight button, you wait until it starts to blink and it'll actually blink out SOS. So you could use this in an emergency situation to signal somebody for far off. Uh, I don't recall exactly, but I know a white light can be seen for a lot of miles, so very far away. And then just press again to turn it off. And the last point that I wanna mention is that this is in the user manual, but this is a lithium ion battery. So if you're gonna plan on using it in below freezing temperatures, it actually can degrade uh, the capabilities of a lithium ion battery. And that's not just a weakness of this unit, it is actually a weakness of all lith lithium ion batteries. It's just part of their chemistry. So I don't know exactly why, but just something I thought was worth mentioning. So one of the last things I wanted to talk about is some potential uses, just to see if maybe this is something that you'd like to pick up. And there's quite a few, and these are just a couple that I came up with off the top of my head. One of them is for camping. If you're out somewhere that doesn't have power and you just want to be able to charge your cell phone, maybe watch a DVD or something in the tent at night or keep a fan running, it'll do that. For any travel in general, it would be great to have. It might be a little too big for flying around on airplanes all the time, but for any other type of travel, it'd be pretty nice to be able to charge your stuff and everybody else's. Something to keep in your vehicle is another good use. You know, if you had a flat tire at night, you could get some light on the situation. Uh, if you got stranded somewhere, you could signal SOS or keep your phones topped up just in case you weren't charging them when your vehicle died. Uh, and another one is emergencies in general. You know, the power goes out. Today, the power went out when I was checking some information on my computer. And so it can go out at any time. You never really know. And if you're battery on your phone's low or you know you want to listen to the radio and see what's going on you know there's a bunch of options where something like this could really come in handy another thing you could use it for is for business you know if you have a business that requires you to maybe go to remote sites and power a laptop or take a bunch of photos with a camera or you know power stage lights you know if you're a youtuber you know something like this can kind of keep you going uh, no matter where you're at, you don't have to worry so much about power constraints because you can actually do most everything off of this for at least an extended period of time. And then the last thing I want to talk about for this is for hobbies. You know, if you have a drone that you want to fly, you can fly it while you're charging a battery, swap the batteries and start charging the next one. And then you can get multiple flights out of a single day versus just one day. Uh, one flight per day per battery. So you don't have to get as many batteries if you have something that you can actually charge on the go or where there's no power. So to wrap things up, I would like to say I think the iGen 160S is definitely a capable machine. It does exactly what it says it's gonna do. 
and it really comes in at a reasonable price. If you guys are interested in checking these things out and maybe want to pick one up for yourself, I've got a link down in the description below. I'm an Amazon affiliate, so if you click on that and you can go pick one up if you want or just check it out to see what they're running for today. Uh, then it'll actually help me out if you do purchase one. It gives a little kickback to the channel, which allows me to keep improving my equipment and uh, bringing better content to you guys as well. So as you guys can see, this unit is now almost charged up, so it's almost ready for me to get out and start using it again. So I'm looking forward to that, and I think I've pretty much covered about everything that you guys would need to know or would like to know. So if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and feel free to share it if uh, there's anybody out there you think could use one of these. So down in the comments, if there's anything you guys would use this for in particular, maybe something I didn't mention, just go ahead and write it down there and let me know. So at this point in time, I'd just like to say thanks for watching and have a great day.